In a previous video, I have already mentioned my final exam at high school in Italy, which is called Esame di Maturità. So it's the final exam in Italy for a scientific school. Let's say the scientific school is translated as Liceo Scientifico. You can translate it as scientific school, where you have more hours of mathematics and physics than other schools. And you can have technical schools where you study more practical subjects. And these schools are called ITIS or um, Istituti Tecnici in Italian, so technical institutes. But anyway, in the, this video, I would just want to focus on some parts of this exam, which is uh, written in Italian and uh, I will translate for you. We will not do all the, the, the exercises, all the questions, we will not solve all the problem. But I want to focus especially on the first question and I will translate it for you and I will also translate all the problem for you so that you can understand what's going on here. I think I was the only one in my classroom who solved it uh, perfectly, so with a perfect score. And um, the major, let's say, difficulty for my classmates was this part, part four, or question number four, which was not solved. And also, I would say that uh, most people in my school were not able to solve this part. I mean, it's nothing difficult, too, nothing too difficult, because at university, for those people who study engineering, mathematics, and physics, this should be an easy problem. Let me say that straight away. But I just want to focus on this in, the, in this case because I want to show you what's going on uh, in Italy in the final exam for these uh, scientific schools. And let me also mention the, the year in which I took this exam. It was 2011, 2011, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, let's go straight to the point. So let me translate it for you. In order to design a swimming pool, an architect is inspired by the functions f and g, which are defined like this. f of x is this function, x cubed minus 16x, and g of x is this function, sine of pi over 2 times x. So you have to think of this function like this. So this is the argument of the sine. And in Italian, we write s-e-n instead of s-i-n because uh, this function is called uh, seno in Italian. So this would be the sine, the sine function, it's the, simply the sinusoid. The first part of this problem asks you to study the functions f and g, and you just have to plot their respective graphs in a convenient system of reference or frame of reference, a Cartesian frame of reference, O, X, Y. So you just have to plot these two functions. And then you have to consider the points of the graph of G, which have horizontal tangent, whose abscissa is uh, contained in the interval minus 10, 10. And you just have to indicate the coordinates. So I'm not going to do this first part. This is quite basic. And uh, I mean, it is of no difficulty. Then the second part, let me translate it for you. The architect, let's say, portrays the free surface of the water of the swimming pool with the region R delimited by the graphs of F and G in the interval 0, 4. And you have to calculate the area of this region R. So you have to calculate an integral, basically. but it's something still basic and I'm not going to do it here, at least not in this video. I want to focus on the, first, the fourth part, as I told you. Then what about part three? Let me translate it as well. Near the edges of the swimming pool, at the points of intersection with uh, the lines y equal to minus 15 and y equal to minus 5, and these lines, where these lines, let's say, intersect the region R, the architect plans to position some light bulbs to 
light up the surface of the water. And you have to calculate the abscissa of such points. And an approximation to the order of 10 to the minus 1 is enough. So this is the translation. You just have to calculate some intersection. It is nothing really major. You have to consider these lines and also the region R. And you have to calculate the abscissa. Finally, part 4, which is what we want to do here. At each point of R, at a distance x from the y-axis, the measurement of the depth of the water of the swimming pool is given by this function, h of x equal to 5 minus x. So, what will be the volume of the swimming pool? The, volu the volume of the water of the swimming pool. And how many liters of water will be necessary to fill up the swimming pool if all the measurements are expressed in meters. Now let's try to understand what's going on here. And I think that the numbers that you see here, uh, for example, this 16 might have changed for different scientific schools and also this pi over two. I think that in my exam here, I had a four and here I had pi instead of pi over two, but whatever, it doesn't really matter. And also, this function was a little different. Instead of 5 minus x, I think that I have 3 minus x. So the problems might be a little different from scientific school to a different scientific school, from liceo to liceo, where the school is called uh, liceo, as I said. But anyway, if you sketch these two functions in the region R, and uh, the region R goes from 0 to 4, so we have to sketch the two functions in this region from 0 to 4. Let's try to understand what's going on. So what about the sine of pi over 2x? What is the period of that function? The period is simply 2 pi divided by pi over 2. So the period of the sine of pi over 2x will simply be given by 4. So it means that here from 0 to or we have the sign which does something like this. So this is the behavior of the sign. It will be 0 at x equal to 2, and then it will be 0 again at x equal to 4, and it is also 0 at x equal to 0. Then here it will be equal to 1 at x equal to 1, and it will be equal to minus 1 at x equal to 3. So this is very easy to guess. And what about the function x cubed minus 16x? So what about it? Well, let's try to understand where the function is 0. x cubed minus 16x is equal to 0 when... So if you factor out x, you have x squared minus 16 equal to 0. So the function will be 0 at x equal to 0 and at plus or minus 4. And in this case, the two points that we are really interested in are these two, 0 here and 4 here. And what about in the middle between 0 and 4? Well, between 0 and 4, you can see it from here. Between 0 and 4, this factor will be negative, but this factor here will be positive. So the function will be negative. It will be negative and it will not intersect the x-axis, we know that we can also find a minimum value for the function. So if, if we take the derivative of the function, and the function is called uh, f, so we have f prime is equal to 3x squared minus 16. The function will be, so let's set it equal to 0. We have x equal to 16 over 3 and we take the square root. This will be the, the value at which we have a, a minimum value for the function between 0 and 4. So we also have the minus sign, so we have plus or minus this, but we are really interested in the plus sign because we are interested in the interval 0, 4. This is equal to 4 divided by the square root of 3. So it will be 
this value here will be approximately 4 divided by 1.7, something like this. So it will be slightly greater than 2. The minimum value will be somewhere uh, here, somewhere here. We can show that this point is uh, smaller, or we, sh we should say it is greater in absolute value, but it is more negative than this point here. And it is also smaller than minus 1. We can, we can check that quite easily because the function f is this one, and we have to calculate it at 4 over square root of 3. So we have 4 over square root of 3 cubed minus 16 times 4 over square root of 3. This is f of 4 over square root of 3. So this will be 16 times 4 divided by 3 times square root of 3 minus 16 times 4 over square root of 3. So we can divide by 3 and multiply here by 3. So this will be 3 square root of 3 in the denominator and then here we will have minus 2 times 16 times 4. We can we can write it like this and we can make this calculation. I mean uh, we have 32 times 4 which is 64 times 2 is 128 divided by 3 square root of 3 and we should not forget the minus sign but you can see that this is smaller than minus 1 you should say this is uh, smaller than minus 1 you can do the calculation and you can check that this point is well well below minus 1 so the function will behave something like this. It does not have any inflection points in the region 0, 4. And you can see that from, from uh, the second derivative. So this is the first derivative. And if you calculate the second derivative, you get 6x minus 0. Because this is just a constant. So there is no inflection point inside the region 0, 4. Only zero could be an inflection point because you can see that the second derivative is zero if you set x equal to zero. But it will not be zero inside. And you can check that there is no other intersection between these two functions. So they only intersect at x equal to four and at x equal to zero. So in this interval, it is possible to show that the sine of pi over 2x is greater than or equal to, so it will be equal only at 0 and 4, but it will be greater than or equal to the function f of x, which is x cubed minus 16x. Now let's find the volume of the swimming pool. Knowing that the depth of the water is given by this function h of x equal to 5 minus x. And I solved it at high school by using a double integral. And the double integral that you can write down is the following. So you integrate from zero to four, and then you also integrate from this function to this function. So from the function x cubed minus 16x to the function sine of pi over two x, and then here you have the depth, which is 5 minus x, and then you have dy dx. This is how I solved it. And let me also tell you that we didn't study double integrals at high school, but I already knew the theory of multivariable calculus because I really liked mathematics. So this is how you can uh, write down the integral. But it is also possible to write down a single integral. There is no need to write down double integrals. I wrote it like this, but you can also simply rewrite it by integrating from 0 to 4. And instead of having another integral here, you can simply integrate some rectangles. So you have to sum all the areas of the rectangles, which... Uh, lie on planes which are parallel to the yz plane. So we have y here, and you also have to think of z, which describes the depth of the water. So for each of these lines here, of these vertical lines, you have to think that there is some kind of depth. So 
you can give a height to this rectangle. So you will have rectangles. You will have a line here, which will have a certain depth. And the depth of this line, for example, if this is the point 1, will be 5 minus 1. So it will be 4, the depth here. So the height of this rectangle will be 4. Similarly, for this one here, so if this is x equal to 2, we will have 5 minus 2, which is 3. So this will be the depth. And you have to sum all these areas from 0 to 4. So you will simply have the integral from 0 to 4 of the areas of rectangles, and you have to integrate over dx. But what is the area of each rectangle? Well, you have the depth of each rectangle, which is 5 minus x. And then you will have the base of the rectangle, which, you, which is given by a generic length here. What is the generic length of these lines? Well, it is th this function at this point, which is the sine of pi over 2x, minus this function here below, which is x cubed minus 16x. So here you will simply have sine of pi over 2x minus x cubed plus 16x, which is the length of uh, the base of the rectangles. And you integrate over dx. So if you check these two expressions, they are exactly the same. They are equivalent. And you can carry out the integration. I will not do the integration here in this video. You just have to integrate and you will find the result. You will find the volume of the swimming pool and you will be able to answer this question. What is the volume of the swimming pool? And also, let's try to answer this other question. How many liters of water will be necessary to fill up the swimming pool if all the measurements are expressed in meters? Well, this is quite trivial, right? Because it means that the result that you will get from this integration, now I don't have the, the result here, but you will have some results and this will be expressed in uh, meters cubed, cubic meters. And we know that one liter is equal to one decimeter cubed. And one decimeter is equal to meters over 10, right? One meter over 10. So if you want to express this in, in liters, you have some result, and then you have meters over 10 cubed times 10 cubed and this will be liters because it will be the decimeters cubed here right so you will have to multiply the result by 10 to the third power to obtain what the problem asks you and that is the liters of water and it's very easy to find it because you have meters cubed so there is a conversion factor.